Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this uh, multi-stakeholder meeting on the African Year of Nutrition 2022. We are extremely happy to have you in. We can see other people still coming uh, in, so please be welcome. But the, um, the objective of this meeting is that um, different people from different angles will focus on the action that is um, hoped for and is possible and need to be generated on uh, nutrition during 2022. It's more needed than ever because of all the uh, impact uh, that is uh, hitting uh, African uh, countries. The impact of COVID is still uh, something uh, many people can feel, but now also the rising food prices, they are a concern. And at the same time, everybody knows we cannot forget about nutrition. Otherwise, we, are, um, uh, we will observe a next generation malnourished people, which means also a malnourished and stunted economic social development. So we have a, a rich uh, group of uh, people who will speak. Um, we have also interpretation. If you um, go down to your screen, we have French and we have Spanish. Then you see a little icon um, that is the globe. And if you uh, push that, uh, use that icon, you can see French and uh, English or uh, Spanish. Uh, and our interpreters will uh, do great. If you um, want to ask a question, there is also an icon um, that is uh, Q and A. Uh, please type your, uh, your question down and I will make sure that the uh, uh, panelists will uh, be able to answer uh, it. And otherwise we hope to have at the end of the meeting also an in li a live uh, Q and A and live discussion. Without further uh, ado, I would like to give the floor to uh, Priscilla Wanjiru uh, Varu, uh, who is the nutrition lead of the African Union Commission. And uh, we all know the African Union is, um, is responsible for overseeing and uh, organizing this uh, year of nutrition. Priscilla, over to you for the next seven till 10 minutes. Hello, good afternoon. I, sorry, let me try and open my camera. Apologies for that. Okay, uh, uh, good, good morning. Uh, apologies for that. I am Priscilla Wanjiro and I'll be representing Dr. Margaret Agama who is the Acting Director for Health and Humanitarian uh, Affairs Directorate, and I'm going to share the presentation on her behalf. And let me start by recognizing the representative from the Sun Movement, the representative from the uh, Government of Cote d'Ivoire, Dr. Patricia, representative from African Development Bank, Af African Leaders for Nutrition, Mr. George, and representative from NEP Auda NEPAD, Ms. Kifilwe. So I hope you can see my presentation. Uh, Jennifer, please confirm. Yeah, we can see it uh, loud and clear. Priscilla, but if you could bring the camera a little bit uh, down so that we can see your whole thing. Yes, there we go. Okay, thank you. So uh, I'm going to share the presentation on the vision and goals of the African Union theme of the year for 2022 and uh, what the African Union aim to achieve uh, by the end of 2022. So my presentation will be outlined in the following manner. We'll, we are going to look at the African agenda for nutrition, which is the background of what the year of nutrition is. We look at some of the decisions that head of state and government have made on nutrition. And then we dive in into the African Union year of nutrition objectives and priorities. Uh, when you look at uh, the African Union agenda on nutrition, it's uh, grounded on, on the agenda 2063, which is the framework for socioeconomic transformation of the continent over the next 50 years. And this agenda has highlighted two goals. Goal one is African people have high standard of living, quality of life, 
sound health and well-being. And then we have goal three, which ensures that citizens are healthy, well-nourished, and enjoying a life expectancy of above 75 years. So it's within this Agenda 26.3 that the year of nutrition is going to be implemented. And all the actions that the African Union is going to undertake with its partners is going to be based by, uh, within these two goals. That is goal one and goal three of the Agenda 2063. In addition to that, we have the Africa Regional Nutrition Strategy, which runs over the period of 10 years. And currently, we are implementing the 2016, 2025, 2023, 2025 uh, strategy. Uh, that strategy, its implementation is also guided by the African Task Force for Food and Nutrition Development, which includes all partners working on nutrition at the continent, as well as member states to ensure that the strategy is well implemented. They ensure that they develop the work plan of the strategy and monitor its implementation. And just to mention, we have conducted the midterm review of the strategy and it will be also be launched this year and it will be presented to, to all the stakeholders. Uh, in addition to that, we have other major decisions that heads of state have made. They go back to 1993, where the member states urged to mobilize enough domestic resources toward the implementation of the Africa Regional Nutrition Strategy. In the past and still that uh, uh, the decision is still ongoing. We also celebrate the African Day for Food and Nutrition Security. This will also be celebrated this year in line with the African Union theme of the year. And also the commission has committed to work with all stakeholders and with NEPAD, which, which is the implementing arm of the commission. The other major decision is the Malabo Declaration. And as we note that it's going to end in 2025, and we have three years to ensure that we, are, we bring down stunting to 10% and underway to 5%. Apologies if you have can hear some noise. Uh, and they commit to positioning uh, nutrition at the high of the agenda by 2025. The other major decision is we have the African Union Nutrition Champion. The reason why I'm mentioning this decision is because the year of nutrition will build up on these commitments and we, we to make sure that they are implemented. So we have the African Nutrition Champion uh, whose mandate has been extended to 2024 and will be key in learning uh, other leaders in implementation of AU decision for 2022. We have the endorsement of African leaders for nutrition that will be spoken further by African Development Bank. And uh, we also have the African Continental Nutrition Report, which is a accountability mechanism. And this, this report will be launched this year. Uh, finally, we come to the endorsement of the African Union theme of the year for 2022 under the theme of strengthening resilience in nutrition and food security on the continent, strengthening agro-food system, health and social protection system for acceleration of human, social, economic, and uh, uh, human capital development. And to note that uh, uh, in implementing this theme, we are working together with other departments of the African Union Commission uh, with, the, uh, with the government of Cote d'Ivoire, the African Development Bank, and NEPAD. So all the activities will be implemented jointly with all partners and stakeholders. The African Union theme of the year. So noting the above commitment of head of state and government, and noting that we have three years left to achieve the Malabo targets, that is 10% stunting and 5% underweight, including the World Health Assembly's targets, which are also the Africa Regional Nutrition Strategy's targets. And also noting that we've conducted the cost of hunger in Africa studies, which shows that the GDP that the member states are losing are between 1.5% to 16.9% losses of GDP. And the, as Ms. Geda noted, the negative impacts of COVID-19 pandemic on food security and nutrition, there is need to increase commitment from member states to invest in nutrition. And that's what uh, the year of nutrition aims to achieve. So more specifically, it's building on the past and ongoing nutrition in 
investment, the main objective of the AU here is to secure political commitment, invest in nutrition and food security to address ongoing nutrition and food security challenges, facilitate broad-based inclusive dialogue among stakeholders, and this is what we are doing, working together with the Sun Movement, and also facilitate learning experiences. So the key priorities include uh, strengthening data and information system, knowledge generation and dissemination to inform decision making. It is, uh, so we will be working with other department, which is the Department of Economic Affairs, which is working on data management and also working with the stakeholders at the national level to ensure that they share good practices on what they are working on, what is working and uh, to facilitate learning. We have advocacy for increased commitment for nutrition investment. And here we are planning to work with, among other agencies with the African Leaders for Nutrition, that's the African Development Bank. And they have started the conversation of leading on that. We have partnerships and mutual accountability for nutrition. And in partnerships, we are calling on all partners working on nutrition in the continent and globally. And this is where also I can see the span is coming in to join uh, in implementation of the theme of the year. And in terms of mutual accountability, we have African Nutrition Scorecard, which was uh, launched in 2019. And also the African Nutrition Report to make sure that it, they, are launched, uh, they, they, uh, they keep on the commitment on the continent. We are also looking at enhancing institutional capacity and then creating enabling environment for nutrition. And in terms of also creating enabling environment for nutrition, it's to note that we are working with the Department of Political Affairs and Peace and Security. Like today, they have a open session on peace and uh, conflict and food security is to make sure that all the stakeholders working in the continent are engaged and ensuring that food security and nutrition is achieved in the continent. And we hope by the, 20, by the end of this year, we'll have tried as much as possible to implement the four priorities that we have identified. Uh, I thank you and apologies for any interruption that you may experience. I was in the office, over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Priscilla. Um, indeed, we heard that you have people um, around you, but um, it was not too disturbing. Uh, it means that people are coming back to uh, the office and are uh, able to meet each other again in person. So no worries. Thank you very much. Um, I've noted down priorities on reliable data, strong advocacy for nutrition, not only a focus on food security, partnerships, collaboration, building institutional uh, 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 capacity. And uh, I have noted down as a separate goal, enabling environment for uh, nutrition. It is crucial and it will stay crucial to uh, reach the uh, ambitions of, uh, of this year. Um, thank you. We'll come back to you if there is any question later on. But now we go to Kifilwe uh, Mualozi, um, who is the Nutrition Project Manager of Olda Nepets. Um, Kifilwe, I hope you are connected and I hope you are ready. I can see you um, and then I know you are ready to take the floor. You have the floor. Thank you so much. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, thank you so much, uh, Sun Movement, for actually uh, creating this platform to actually unpack the AU of nutrition and also to strengthen the partnerships, not just continental, but also uh, globally. Uh, Jennifer, can I have access please to show my screen? Yes, you have access. Go ahead. Thank you so much. I think uh, many of us, we know why we're here today. And just to reiterate on what uh, my colleague uh, uh, Priscilla has just mentioned that we cannot do this without uh, our partnerships. We have to collaborate, 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 and ensure that uh, the member states also have uh, access to what AU of Nutrition is all about and what they can showcase uh, on the ground. I still can't have access. Okay, I'm having it now, it's quite slow. 
I think my connection is quite slow, so but I'm getting there. Yeah. Speaking of uh, of of, of uh, member states engagement, uh, just last week we were actually uh, in Tanzania with government of Tanzania, and they were speaking highly of how they collaborate with Sun Movement, and that they've actually have achieved so much on the ground uh, through Sun Movement. So I want to also appreciate uh, the commitment from the Sun Movement Secretariat uh, based in Geneva that you know you are also being recognized uh, from the member states uh, level. As uh, my colleague uh, Priscilla had mentioned, we are the technical and implementing arm of the African Union. And as you know, uh, NEPAD actually is now the, the African Union Development Agency. So now we have a very big uh, uh, platform that we need to deliver in terms of uh, uh, um, development agenda in Africa. And I think uh, this year, as many of you have said, it's a very special year for all of us because our leaders now have recognized the importance of nutrition and food security. And I think for many years, I remember very well, three years ago, our Madam Gera actually led another meeting in Niger with Dr. Mayaki, where we're trying to really strengthen the commitment of nutrition on the ground. And as I remember well, in that, um, that, that meeting with the government of Niger, we went on to also uh, you know, notice the commit commitment from the member states, especially from the high level office, Office of Niger, for example, the president of Niger was actually there to open up the session. So I think with the same approach that we have on the ground is to really continue with the spirit of really uh, having our, our leaders committing to nutrition, not just nutrition activities, but also the national allocated budget uh, that they come with every, every year. I'm trying to, my net is actually very, very slow. Sorry for that. I'm not sure if you can see my screen now. Uh, can you see my yes, screen? We can, yes, we can, we can see everything. Okay. I will not really bother much about the uh, what NEPAD is all about, but just to really talk about uh, the issue of uh, building capacity of the African Union member states and regional bodies, advancing knowledge that we are doing, of course, with the support of side movement and other partners that are here present, and also to ensure that the technical interface of the continent is actually also being uh, done through collaboration of partners. Yeah, as you know, the year of nutrition, Priscilla had mentioned the, um, the theme. Also, I want to uh, reiterate that, just to talk about the, to mention that uh, based on what is existing, uh, including the agenda 2063, Priscilla mentioned the seven aspirations, but I just want to highlight that the aspiration one on prosperous Africa based on inclusive growth and sustainable development. Goal three is actually focusing on healthy and well-nourished citizens. So I know it's a long vision. Maybe some of us will be under the ground, like not existing, but uh, at least Africa has a vision that can actually get its member states. Now, um, other, other existing frameworks that we have in the continent also includes the commitment of Malabo, as Priscilla mentioned, the 10 and the 5% uh, you know, uh, focus by 2025 is also very important. And also to mention that focus on the first thousand days is also, I think, is a very important initiative that needs also to be scaled up. When I was in Tanzania on the ground, they actually mentioned that they are focused on early child development with the support of many partners. And I think it's also a very important uh, initiative to be scaled up. Yeah, to mention that uh, the African nutrition um, regional strategy is also another area that we should also build on as we celebrate the year of nutrition. Now, when you look at to NEPAD, NEPAD also have developed the implementation plan, which is focusing on food systems and nutrition. And this is taking place from 2019 to 2025, focusing on a towards a coordinated and accelerated action for completely made hunger and food insecurity. And I think the young nutrition really is really by tracing on some of the issues that we already have actually uh, mentioned or prioritized as an institution. And this is also focusing on adopting a system approach that ensures sustainable diets with core benefits on climate, nutrition, human capital, the environment plus overall economic development. This is really also uh, really aligned with the year of nutrition. And within this implementation plan, we have certain flagship programs that we are focusing on. Some of them, as you know, is the home goal school feeding program approach. Just to also, um, but first, what Priscilla had mentioned in terms of the implementation plan of the African Year of, year of Nutrition, uh, we have actually a long list of activities that partners here present also contributed to. 
So it's a long list that I'll not go through it, all of it, but uh, just to mention the few that AD and NAPAT, for example, will be focusing on, and of course, the support of the partners that are here present. I think it's, uh, it, it's also very important to recognize what Sun Movement has been doing through Jennifer, working very hard in terms of really bringing an awareness of the year of nutrition. I know that there's been also another event that happened in March that Sun Movement actually led. And that is also a very important um, milestone from us as ANU and AJN and the other partners involved. As you know, this year, this month rather, is a, it's an African month. And within this year of African month, we have, we have developed what is called the Africa uh, uh, series and it's focusing on building resilience and nutrition, accelerating Africa's human capital and socioeconomic development. So this uh, month, it, we have different partners, as, as you can see in the list there, that are really contributing to this year Africa Dialogue Series. And uh, the last part of uh, the month, we'll be focusing on the uh, importance of nutrition in the food systems that ADN and NAPAD will be leading with the support of other partners such as AGRA and FAO. So it's really important that uh, all the continental events are also really uh, leveraging on the AU Year of Nutrition, and we are supporting what is actually existing. Now, uh, just uh, a week ago, two weeks ago rather, end of April, uh, we are able to convene a regional economic union uh, consultative meeting with the support of AFSEN, which is the Africa Initial Development Network. And in this uh, our, our meeting, we showed that the RECs also have a voice in terms of implementing uh, some key activities within the area of nutrition. And in that meeting, we also gave the, the RECs the platform to list uh, certain priorities that they'll be doing in terms of celebrating this year. Some of them really mentioned the importance of capacity, not just, just uh, resources per se, like financial, also the warm bodies that are needed on the ground to deliver some of the key actions on the year of nutrition. Some of them also mentioned that the need of having a nutritionist deployed you know, within the regional economic communities to ensure that this agenda also is actually being sustained and advanced. So it was a very great uh, platform for the regional economic communities. Uh, and then we have also, uh, as NEP, AD and NAPAD, we have also launched what is called Home Go School Feeding uh, uh, Guidelines. So get, this guidance is actually developed to ensure that we strengthen the Home Go School Feeding Program, if looking at the policies, looking at the programs on the ground as well. And this was done along the seventh Africa Day for School Feeding uh, Day uh, program, uh, which takes every year on the 1st of March. And I think I want to also encourage uh, member states to really also our, our commemorate a national level, the Africa Day for School Feeding. For example, uh, this year, the 1st of March, we're able to collaborate with the government of Nigeria to really be on the ground and celebrate the importance of Congo School Feeding Program and how we can actually improve uh, the challenges that the countries are facing in terms of strengthening uh, the, the Home Go School Feeding Program within, within the, the, the national uh, level. So this is one of the key activities that is mentioned and is actually uh, completed. Just to also mention that uh, we are also ongoing. Keep feeling, keep feeling, keep feeling, keep feeling. Yes. You are um, such a good speaker that you're speeding up all the time. You hardly <laughs> take a breath. And mm -hmm. I think the interpreters are struggling. That's so struggling. So calm down there. a little bit and take a good breath here and there. Otherwise, okay. we are losing. I'm looking at uh, the time. Yeah, okay, but thank you. take care. Take care. So, all right, thank you. Yeah. So yeah. thanks for that. So just to mention that the home post school feeding guidelines was, was recently uh, launched on the 1st of March. And this uh, guideline is actually uh, really aligned with the School Ministry Coalition for Food Systems that WFP is actually leading and other important partners that are here present. Uh, this is also really focusing on the priorities of the regional economic uh, strategies. For example, uh, in SADC, which is the Southern African region, they've already developed a regional uh, home cost school feeding program uh, guidelines that is focusing on school health and nutrition. And in doing so also, we are also collaborating with other RECs, you know, to really bring out, bring out the importance of uh, investing on the home go school feeding program. Because as you know, it's a cross-cutting and multi-sectoral uh, program, which is also a game changer solution uh, for food systems. So when you look at the North Africa region, for example, Wa'amu, we recently had a, had a discussion with them last month to really also make them understand the importance of investing 
on the school feeding program and other acts also West Africa, Central Africa, and the Horn of Africa, which is IGAD, that also are uh, really prioritizing school health and nutrition within the regional strategies. And all these efforts actually are aligned with the area of nutrition. Now, when it comes to the national level, some uh, member states are already rolling out the, the guidelines. For example, uh, Botswana next week, for example, Japanese will be there, JICA, to support Botswana in terms of rolling out the school feeding program guidelines by looking at the policy development of Botswana. The Cote d'Ivoire, for example, we've been in, in collaborating with the government there in Cote d'Ivoire. Other countries such as also Tanzania, uh, and last week, for example, they mentioned that they already have developed the national school feeding guideline, which was launched, launched recently. So this is something that we actually appreciate on the ground uh, when it comes to the young nutrition, what should we build on in terms of the existing initiatives that the member states are also uh, owning up and taking the lead in that. Now, when it comes to the continental approach as part of the implementation plan, we were also working with the government of Kifilwa, Kifilwa, you are already um, running out of time, um, quite uh, some minutes. I give you one more Thank minute you. to finalize. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you so much. So just to mention that with the Africa Task Force uh, meeting on nutrition and, and, and uh, food security, it's also a continental a task force, you know, really focused on terms of really discussing key issues around nutrition and food security. So this task force will be also be used as a platform to really strengthen the collaboration and partnership in terms of delivering on the year of nutrition. And this is also ongoing. Uh, next month, we should be having this meeting taking place in Botswana, Kaburuni. And uh, to mention the Africa Day for Food and Nutrition Security, it's an annual cooperation, which also will be looking into in terms of building the platform and advocacy around the year of nutrition. We from the African Union Development Agency want to focus on promoting traditional indigenous knowledge to enrich Africa's diets and food system. This was done. So the idea is also to scale up this important initiative and sustain indigenous systems systems going forward. Now to finish finish off, I want to mention the importance of the um, partnership. To conclude, to say that, uh, like we've been mentioning, we need partners to be here and to be present in the country as well in terms of uh, celebrating EU nutrition. Without partnership, we cannot be firm. In conclusion, I would like to also really highlight uh, the late Nelson Mandela's uh, uh, you know, uh, vision of saying that even without a vision is a movement without a moral foundation. And this is a vision that we as African, we are really looking into in terms of uh, having a vision to deliver on this key milestones of uh, nutrition and food systems in the continent. Thank you so much for attention and sorry for Russian. Thank you very much, uh, Kifilwe, for um, explaining a lot of things and giving already examples. I think the guidelines for the design of homegrown school feeding need to be shared with all uh, countries and participants who are participating in this uh, uh, event. If you have more concrete guidelines, please share them because then we can inspire each other. And about this African year of food and nutrition security, I presume that must be the 29th of October, 2022. In your slide, it's 2020, but um, everybody understands that it needs to happen uh, this year. Yeah, thank you so much. Without further ado, and um, I understand, uh, Kifilwa, that you need to leave, uh, but if you are able to join to continue, uh, we would be happy to give you um, a question uh, because I'm sure they, there are questions. Then we go to George Uma, who is the coordinator of the African Leaders for Nutrition. Um, and he is going to talk about um, what action the African Leaders for Nutrition will take. Um, George, you have the floor. Please be as concise and action oriented as possible, because the year has already started. Um, and with only or organizing meetings, we will not improve the uh, nutrition. So it is about action. George, over to you. Thank you, Excellency Garda, distinguished panelists and, uh, you know, colleagues on the platform who have joined us for this day. 
Uh, George Uma is my name, and I'll be taking you through just in very briefly what the African Leaders for Nutrition is doing currently. And just a little bit of background is that we recognized uh, the need to really uh, ensure that high level political advocacy remains an agenda. And that is one of the reasons that the African Leaders for Nutrition was established uh, in recognition that the effect of malnutrition had a far reaching and long term consequences to the African development trajectory. And therefore, in 2018, this was endorsed by the African Union. Um, and some of the few leaders, as you can see, have really um, been a critical part of ensuring that nutrition remains an agenda. You can see um, Kofi Annan, uh, you know, former Secretary General, uh, our own president of the African Development Bank, and of course, other leaders who have played a critical role. I will skip the history, but it's important for you to recognize that uh, the African Leaders for Nutrition is a platform. And I want to make sure that we underline that because I'll be talking through that uh, throughout the presentation. It's a platform for high level political engagement to advocate for urgent intervention to mitigate malnutrition across Africa. Um, just to mention that quite a number of leaders have played a critical role. You can see we have the co-founders and any eminent persons who are critically supporting the African Leaders for Nutrition. And this is the opportunity for all of you on this platform to appreciate that the high political will is there. The need for us to continue engaging these leaders is an opportunity to drive the year of African nutrition. And of course, this is an important element that the mandate for African leaders for nutrition is actually envisioned and embedded within the African Union uh, statutes. And it's important for us to appreciate that also this is a platform for all of us. And it's a platform that then the partnership that we all bring on board is an opportunity for us to work with these high leaders so that we can be able to position uh, nutrition. Some of the current champion, just for you to know, because during this particular year, these champions will be playing different roles in positioning nutrition as an agenda, more importantly, on increment of budgets, financial commitment, but also policy drives that are likely to enable, you know, the advocacy and the engagement of different policymakers in accelerating achievement of year of nutrition objectives. One of the critical, you know, aspects that is important is how we are going to leverage on data and the ALN under the African Development Bank, working with the African Union, has established a nutrition data platform or dashboard that can ensure that we have real-time data to help us make decisions that are related to nutrition. And more importantly is the fact that we are moving this to a digital platform in the next few months. And this is going to be the place, the dashboard where all of you stakeholders on this platform can be able to ensure that the, all the decisions that you are making, all the policies that you try to drive, all the financial investments that you try to put into focus are premised on data that is real time at the continental level. Now, for the year of nutrition, our focus is simple. We want to ensure that we secure investment to implement the nutrition action plan. We want to ensure that we are able to identify a reasonable number of cost-effective interventions to reduce malnutrition. But more importantly, we also want to promote accountability in addressing malnutrition at country level. And I will get into this in a very accelerated mode. So in an effort to ensure that we increase political mobilization for increasing, um, for improving nutrition security in Africa, what we are doing currently is we are working within the framework of declaration of year of nutrition to create necessary political momentum. 
legislative policy and budgetary mechanism. It's important for you to note that when we, I talked about the platform, the most important thing about the platform is for us to be able to leverage on the accolades, the powers, the political will that all the champions bring about so that we can be able to ensure that nutrition remains in the high level political agenda so that we can also be able to appreciate that the political leadership has the goodwill to ensure that there are increment in budgetary you know, uh, mechanisms within country level to ensure that enough resources is reinforced to finance um, uh, nutrition action plans at country level. We are also in the process having appreciated that the year of nutrition is going to be undertaken at different level, that we bring about new um, uh, champions who are not just heads of state, but are also technical people. So for example, ministers for finance, ministers for agriculture, ministers for health, so that we can be able to have an array of nutrition champions who can really play a critical role in positioning nutrition agenda. And finally, the need for us to continue to build the momentum by making sure that we are part of different side events. There are quite a number of uh, upcoming side events. One of them is what um, the ALN, uh, the African Union and the Cote d'Ivoire is going to organize in, in the month of June to bring ministers for finance, foreign affairs, minister for agriculture and health to be able to discuss and dialogue how we can be able to improve nutrition financing within the context of year of nutrition. So just to mention that one uh, particular event that is upcoming, there are other events that we are going to be able to work with during the humanitarian summit. We have side events that we are working on and the interest is to make sure that nutrition has the priority and is being positioned within the humanitarian context and over and above hoping that a policy framework that is likely to define nutrition investment target but also mainstream nutrition within other sector is discussed at the African Task Force for Food and Nutrition Development in Botswana that is also an event that is coming up in the next month. The increased demand for investment is critical and the need to support countries to be able to ensure that they integrate nutrition within other sector in an effort to make sure that within those particular sector, there are investment for nutrition sensitive action without an overall increment in nutrition within the national engagement platform. We are happy that part of this is what also SAN is doing, and we are happy to really continue to engage in mobilizing and working with the different countries to make sure that investment and nutrition policy on integration is actualized. Of course, there are a number of uh, you know forums that are being organized, uh, and I know my colleagues uh, Kefilo and Priscilla have talked about the Rex event that was organized two weeks ago. We were part of that, and we were able to dialogue to you know leverage on the expertise, the experience of different um, Rex representation to be able to identify a critical intervention that is cross-cutting within early childhood uh, development that really can be inspiring within the continent to make sure that investments can go there in terms of resourcing, to make sure that this, uh, policies can be able to enable us to also ensure we mainstream early childhood development. These are the opportunities that the African Leaders for Nutrition is offering to make sure that some of the champions are able to advocate for specific uh, intervention. And finally, uh, Moore, promoting- you have uh, one minute, George. Yes, yes, almost done. Finally, promoting accountability, very critical for us. How do we make sure that our leadership are able to you know, uh, be held account to their commitment. The African Leaders for Nutrition is working with the champions to make sure that at their level, they are able to, you know, promote accountability within the political leadership, but also within the different stakeholders who are supporting the nutrition agenda in Africa. How can we work with the African Leaders for Nutrition? One, we present the opportunity for champions to really be able to advocate for agenda. So if you have specific agenda, please reach out to African leaders so that we can be able to work with our champions to position that particular agenda within the nutrition context. Number two, 
We are engaging with the different stakeholders at county level. The ALN is leading an ad hoc committee that is really uh, bringing on board all stakeholders. Currently, we are working on messaging for the year of nutrition that is going to be used by all stakeholders and also working on other aspects in terms of making sure that the nutrition uh, investment target is available. Thirdly, we can hold joint actions with you as stakeholders. Let's work together. We will bring the champions who will make sure that the messaging has the highest profile as possible. We will also be disseminating fact sheets that profile countries and provide data for all of you at this platform to be able to make sure that decision making is influenced by data using the you know continental nutrition accountability scorecard and finally we will be working with you to make sure that we are able to integrate nutrition let's continue building a, a platform of bringing all the stakeholders together so that the agenda has concerted effort thank you very much Thank you very much, uh, George. Um, um, while you were presenting, participants were asking whether we will share the presentations. Yes, we will share the presentations and also if there are guidelines, concrete uh, roadmaps or something like this, we will make sure that they are shared. Um, on this June event, uh, George, please make sure that all uh, countries in Africa that the uh, nutrition uh, people are aware of it, so that they can also prepare with the Minister of Finance. And I think given the current uh, situation, the crisis, I think there is space to put uh, debt relief on the agenda for the Ministers of Finance, because um, ministers need to invest in uh, food and nutrition security, and it's an extra investment, they are happy to do so. But if they then end up to be more uh, indebted, um, then it's going into the wrong direction. So uh, wherever these ministers go, uh, ministers of finance, be it the World Bank or be it the UN General Assembly or the regional uh, financial institutions, focus on debt relief so that the investment agenda can take over. Thank you so much. Uh, let's go to Dr. Patricia Nagoran. She is the uh, Scaling Up Nutrition Movement focal point in um, uh, Cote d'Ivoire. And um, she will, uh, she's also um, representing the country that uh, has the, taken the first step to initiate uh, the, um, the African Year of uh, Nutrition. Her president, President Usama, um, was uh, making uh, the proposal. Um, so there is special leadership here. And I know that uh, Dr. Patricia Nogoran was very much uh, involved in this initiative. Um, Dr. Patricia, the next eight to 10 minutes are for you. You have the floor. Avula la parole. Merci. Merci, je voudrais saluer encore la coordonnatrice du mouvement SUN. Euh, merci encore pour votre passage à Abidjan qui a donné Donnez toute la vie. s'il vous plaît. For those who are listening to the English language, please use the interpretation button down, button down in your uh, button down in your screen. Please move on, Patricia. Back to you, Patricia. Merci. Merci encore. Alors je disais merci encore à la coordonnatrice du mouvement Sun qui était à Abidjan avec nous, qui a donné encore une visibilité à la nutrition. Merci aux différentes pan panélistes. Et donc, je vais faire la présentation. Diapo suivante. Euh, je vais échanger sur la feuille de route nationale qui a été retenue pour l'année de la nutrition. Diapo suivant. Next. Voilà, juste rappeler que le, la feuille de route s'inscrit dans les grandes orientations de, de la, 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 la feuille continentale qui avait 13 lignes d'action. Donc, nous l'avons élaborée fin mars avec un, selon un processus inclusif, participatif avec le comité technique du CONAPE. Ce que je peux dire avant la finalisation de cette feuille nationale, nous avons organisé une journée d'échange avec les collectivités parlementaires, ministère des Affaires étrangères sur le développement du capital humain et la nutrition avec quatre pays de la sous-région. Ça a été avec l'appui de Action contre la faim. 
Aussi, nous avons abrité la conférence de presse du mouvement Sun sur l'année de la nutrition qui s'est fait en fin mars. Next. Alors, s'agissant de la feuille de route, euh, si nous prenons l'action 2 de l'UA, qui était de faire des plaidoyers au niveau des chefs d'État, la Côte d'Ivoire a retenu ce plaidoyer, excusez-moi, au niveau des chefs d'État, c'était pour augmenter encore l'engagement politique et surtout le financement, l'allocation budgétaire. Nous, nous avons retenu au niveau de la Côte d'Ivoire pour s'aligner sur cette activité de faire une table ronde pour la mobilisation des ressources du plan national de développement qui comprend un secteur sur la nutrition. Donc, ce serait l'occasion de confirmer encore l'engagement de, de l'État de Côte d'Ivoire de financer ce plan à hauteur de 15 du coût global, surtout notre engagement de Tokyo euh, avec les données. J'en re, reparlerai plus tard. Next, diapo suivant. Alors, concernant l'action 3, qui était la promotion des partages des connaissances, et des meilleures pratiques. La Côte d'Ivoire va, pour l'année de la nutrition, essayer d'identifier, documenter, valider au moins deux bonnes pratiques euh, qu'on a eu à mettre en place en Côte d'Ivoire. Diapo, next. Pour l'activité 4, il s'agit du lancement des rapports continentaux. Pour cela, la Côte d'Ivoire va diffuser l'étude sur le coût de la fin de la malnutrition que nous avons réalisée, et ça sera pour le mois de juin-juillet. Nous allons aussi partager les données de la mix sur la nutrition qui est attendue normalement pour d'ici juin et nous allons partager au niveau continental. Et surtout en ce qui concerne la petite enfance, nous allons passer à échelle euh, la, la petite enfance dans 11 nouvelles régions, ce qui porte le projet à 75 avec la signature du projet intégré de nutrition et développement de la petite enfance financé par la BID. Ça sera fait pour juin 2022. Pour l'action 5, à savoir réaliser la cartographie avec les partenaires, c'est en cours. Nous sommes en train de le faire dans le cadre de l'élaboration la, de la, du nouveau plan. Donc, nous allons essayer de le finaliser. Merci. Diapo. Action 6 de l'UA, qui veut que nous fassions le renforcement du plaidoyer de haut niveau avec les champions de ALN et surtout les parlementaires. Alors, à notre niveau, nous allons donc participer à l'élaboration du plan de travail 2022 des champions ALN et surtout faire le suivi des engagements qui ont été pris par les parlementaires ivoiriens lors de l'atelier régional qu'on avait organisé sur l'allaitement. Next, diapo. Voilà, pour l'action 7, il s'agit de commémorer les événements continentaux. C'est ce que nous allons faire. Nous allons aussi nous inscrire dans, cette, dans ces différentes journées. Diapo. Pour l'action 8, il s'agit de faire la promotion de la santé et la nutrition scolaire au niveau régional et national, nous avons retenu comme activité, d'abord, c'était de lancer le réseau des jeunes et ça a été fait. Et c est, c est, je disais tantôt merci encore à la coordonnatrice pour sa présence lors de ce lancement de haut niveau qui a enregistré la présence du vice-président de la République et de tous les ministres concernés par la problématique nutritionnelle. Ça a été un moment fort pour faire comprendre à ces nouveaux ministres et aussi au vice-président qui est nouveau de la République de Côte d'Ivoire de comprendre les enjeux de la nutrition. Et nous allons aussi prendre en compte la composante euh, nutrition, euh, santé en milieu scolaire dans le nouveau plan que nous sommes en train de finaliser, enfin d'élaborer avec le renforcement des programmes de pérennisation des cantines scolaires, la mise en place des clubs santé, nutrition, santé, nutrition. Pour le 9, l'activité 9, tout le défi de la création d'une base de données. Et pour cela, nous allons finaliser la phase 2 du projet qui porte sur la, le, le projet NASU, la plateforme nationale multisectorielle d'information en matière de nutrition. Euh, pour cela, nous bénéficions de l'appui de l'Union européenne. Il va s'agir en gros de renforcer les capacités des sectoriels à générer des données et surtout renforcer les mécanismes intégrés de suivi. Nous allons aussi pour cela traduire au mieux l'engagement que nous avons pris au sommet de Tokyo sur les données. Action euh, 10 de l'UA, il s'agissait de faire la cartographie sur les aliments de base, les aliments indigènes. Et pour le dire, en Côte d'Ivoire, nous avons aussi démarré le processus d'élaboration de la table des valeurs nutritionnelles. Une étude de base a déjà été réalisée pour savoir la disponibilité de ces aliments par région. Et surtout, nous allons passer à l'étape suivante. C'est un processus assez long qui prendra à peu près trois ans. Donc, on a gagné déjà une année et on va poursuivre pour l'année de la nutrition. Action 11. Alors là, c'est action 11, 12, 13. Nous avons fusionné 
et nous avons l'intention pour cela d'élaborer un plan de contingence et surtout définir un mécanisme d'alerte précoce au niveau communautaire pour les questions de malnutrition et aussi de sécurité alimentaire. Euh, je pense que à diapo suivante. Alors ça, c'était la feuille de route au niveau national. Il faudrait dire qu'au niveau continental, en notre qualité de parrain de l'année de la nutrition, la commission de l'UA nous a invités à identifier une ou plusieurs activités. C'est toujours en discussion, nous attendons l'arrivée de la commissaire, mais je pourrais dire comme ça quelques projets d'échange à la suite des échanges. Alors, ce serait la réflexion sur abriter une réunion de plaidoyer des chefs d'État de l'Afrique de l'Ouest et du Centre en faveur de la nutrition, abriter la réunion des plaidoyers des ministres des Finances, des Affaires étrangères, de la Santé, de l'Agriculture en faveur de la nutrition, sinon abriter la réunion ministérielle, c'est-à-dire le CTS, Comité technique spécialisé de la Santé, orienté sur la, le thème de l'année. Je dirais que c'est des projets, hein, ce n'est pas encore confirmé. Nous devons encore discuter avec la commission de l'UIA et avec la BAD, nous sommes en pour parler. Et je voudrais dire que cette feuille sera très prochainement adoptée avec la nomination du nouveau vice-président de la République qui en charge la nutrition et ça sera adopté en Conseil des ministres. Je vous remercie. J'espère que je n'ai pas été trop rapide. Merci à vous. Patricia, thank you so much. You were fast, but the uh, interpreters did a great job. Um, thank you for interpretation and thank you for a very concrete uh, presentation um, that can inspire uh, also other countries or uh um other countries can uh, also come forward with their examples um before we open the floor for questions and uh, and answers or questions to be answered by the panelists we go to judith cabora and judith is a sun civil society regional uh, coordinator for west and central africa um judith you have the floor for the next five seven eight minutes over to you Thanks a lot, Gerda. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for listening. Um, I'm very happy to present on behalf of um, uh, the Sun uh, Civil Society Network in West and Central Africa. Um, I'm trying to put, okay, yeah, I think it's okay now. So the presentation is in English, but I will speak in uh, French. And uh, as we have um, the interpretation, I think it will be very fine. Um, donc, dans la région Afrique de l'Ouest et du Centre, nous avons un grand pool uh, d'organisations de la société civile. Nous avons 20 pays et um, parmi ces 20 pays, uh, on a une grande mobilisation d'au moins 800 uh, organisations de la société civile qui travaillent pour uh, mettre à l'échelle les questions de nutrition à travers uh, le mouvement SON. Donc, avec ces différentes organisations, nous avons décidé de faire un effort pour euh, euh, cette année particulièrement de la nutrition de l'Union africaine et de travailler à plus mobiliser des voies, donc des nouvelles voies pour euh, la nutrition en mettant l'accent vraiment sur euh, les, de nouvelles cibles, donc notamment les jeunes. Et nous voulons travailler au niveau de la région à mobiliser des jeunes euh, francophones pour euh, la nutrition. Et je pense que euh, Dr. Patricia a déjà euh, parler d'une des initiatives au niveau de la Côte d'Ivoire où on a pu faire ce lancement. Donc, c'est un processus qui a commencé au mois de février avec des renforcements de capacité euh, en matière de nutrition et de plaidoyer que nous avons pu assurer aux côtés société civile pour euh, ces jeunes et aussi les accompagner jusqu'à ce qu'ils aient tous les éléments euh, de plan d'action en collaboration avec le gouvernement ivoirien pour faire le lancement qui a eu lieu juste euh, la semaine dernière euh, à Abidjan, avec vraiment la haute participation vice-président et les différents ministres euh, notamment. Donc le processus, on l'a démarré aussi au Niger et on va le continuer pour aboutir jusqu'à aussi, d'ici quelques mois également, euh, à la finalisation et au lancement d'un réseau de jeunes euh, en charge de la nutrition au Niger. Alors, autre élément que nous sommes en train de faire au niveau des acteurs de la société civile, nous avons aussi recruter des champions ou des ambassadeurs 
avec lesquels nous travaillons. Et ces champions sont souvent des leaders locaux, des célébrités ou des parlementaires qui sont sélectionnés vraiment dans leur pays pour porter davantage la voix sur la nutrition. Et euh, en février dernier, en fin février, nous avons pu commencer en fait des discussions avec eux pour leur expliquer l'objectif de l'année euh, pour la nutrition. Et chacun d'entre eux a décidé de prendre des actions spécifiques pour booster davantage euh, la question de la nutrition. Par exemple, les journalistes euh, avec lesquels nous travaillons ont décidé qu'eux vont organiser pour euh, les médias euh, des actions de renforcement de capacité en faveur de, de leurs collègues journalistes. Euh, donc, d'ici le mois de juillet, en Côte d'Ivoire notamment, au niveau du Burkina, les champions qui sont engagés ont dit qu'ils feront de nouvelles vidéos pour appeler vraiment à plus d'engagement de, pour la nutrition d'ici le mois d'octobre prochain. Et euh, dans les autres pays, nous travaillons aussi avec euh, des maires, des élus locaux, euh, notamment, vous voyez, au niveau du Mali, on a 46 euh, communes, au niveau du Cameroun, 21 communes, au Niger, 19 communes, avec lesquelles nous travaillons pour qu'ils intègrent la nutrition dans leur plan locaux notamment, et on a réussi à le faire. Et pour nous, l'année d'action pour la nutrition de l'Union africaine est une opportunité pour poursuivre cette dynamique et faire en sorte vraiment que ces maires puissent, de façon globale, allouer plus de financement pour la nutrition. Et nous avons déjà un bon exemple avec les maires du Cameroun qui ont décidé que chez eux, dans leur commune, ils peuvent allouer au moins 1 de leur budget locaux pour soutenir la nutrition. Donc, ce sont des exemples que nous allons poursuivre, notamment au niveau de la région. Alors, les nouvelles cibles que nous voulons vraiment engager au cours de cette année d'action pour la nutrition, c'est vraiment euh, les ministres des Affaires étrangères, euh, notamment, pour lesquels nous nous rendons compte, justement, qu'ils n'ont pas forcément... Euh, yes. Sorry. Sorry, Gada. Ah, OK. Please go, move on, move on. Uh, okay, can, can you listen me cl clearly, sorry? You did. Hello, yeah, okay, can, you, can I continue, please? Yes, you can continue, Judith. We just had a change over inter of interpreters. No problem yes. at all, go ahead, right. thank you. Okay, thanks a lot. Don't, je disais que pour les, okay, pour les, les ministères des Affaires étrangères, nous avons décidé que cette année, nous allions mener des actions spécifiques euh, au niveau des ministres des Affaires étrangères, sachant que souvent, ils participent à un haut niveau, à des réunions quand les chefs d'État doivent se rencontrer et qu'ils n'ont pas forcément la sensibilité sur la nutrition. Donc, nous allons mener des actions spécifiques vis-à-vis -vis de ces ministres et au niveau de la zone CDAO, donc ECOAS, nous avons décidé aussi de mettre un accent sur la sensibilisation des ministres des Finances pour dédier en tout cas plus de financement pour la nutrition, sachant que dans la région, ce qu'on a constaté d'un point de vue politique, on a beaucoup d'engagement déjà, on a des plans de nutrition qui sont déjà en route. Malheureusement, sur le côté financement, on a encore peu de financement pour la nutrition, notamment les financements domestiques. Donc, c'est ça qui nous pousse à nous intéresser au ministre euh, des Finances. Alors, pour le grand public, nous avons décidé aussi au niveau de la société civile de contribuer davantage à, on va dire, lever plus de voix et créer plus de conscience au niveau du grand public par rapport à la nutrition. Donc, en février, nous avons lancé, juste après le lancement hein, de l'année de l'Union africaine, nous avons lancé aussi une campagne qu'on appelle Génération Nutrition, qui est une campagne qui veut vraiment pousser les acteurs à investir plus dans le capital humain, en finançant réellement la nutrition pour, euh, on va dire, travailler davantage sur les communautés et euh, changer les situations au sein des pays. Donc, ce, cette campagne, elle a été lancée. Donc, vous voyez les flyers de cette campagne. À partir de la fin du mois de mai jusqu'au mois de ju juillet, nous allons poursuivre cette campagne avec euh, notamment une dissémination d'informations dans les, euh, on va dire les réseaux sociaux et autres pour accentuer le partage d'informations à tous pour que les gens puissent être un peu plus sensibilisés sur euh, la nutrition. 
À partir du mois de septembre jusqu'au mois de, de novembre, nous allons changer un peu euh, la mobilisation publique euh, en nous adressant beaucoup plus vers les, les, les preneurs de décision pour voir un peu comment ils peuvent nous faire euh, des appels à l'action en expliquant que la nutrition est leur responsabilité à eux et comment ils sont en train de s'engager réellement pour la nutrition et pousser d'autres à faire pareil. Donc, ça sera vraiment des cas d'exemple de grands leaders qui se sont engagés pour la nutrition et qui font des actions vers lesquelles nous allons nous engager pour faire les vidéos appelant les autres à faire pareil. Alors, de façon globale, je pense que pour la société civile, pour nous, toutes nos actions que nous faisons euh, n'ont de sens que si on arrive à pousser à ce qu'il y ait plus de redevabilité en faveur de la nutrition. Donc, pour cette année d'action pour la nutrition, nous comptons vraiment mettre un accent là-dessus. Pour nous, nous n'allons pas appeler, en tout cas, pendant cette année, les pays à prendre plus d'engagement. Non, nous pensons qu'on a déjà beaucoup d'engagement qui ont été pris par, de part et d'autre. Ce que nous voulons, c'est de voir comment on arrive à démarrer l'implémentation de ces engagements. Et pour la plupart des pays d'Afrique de l'Ouest et du Centre, l'idéal serait que l'on voit au cours de cette année euh, africaine le démarrage de la mise en œuvre des actions, qui ont, des engagements qui ont été pris à nutrition pour la croissance pendant le sommet et aussi le sommet euh, système alimentaire. Donc, beaucoup de pays de la région vont travailler et voir comment on peut commencer à implémenter les engagements du N4G notamment. Et également, je pense que l'équipe d'ALN a parlé, on sait qu'il y a des champions qui ont été euh, nommés. Au niveau de la société civile, nous, souvent, nous suivons ces champions-là. Et pour nous, l'essentiel aussi, c'est les feuilles de route de ces champions, comment ces feuilles de route sont implémentées. Et nous allons vraiment faire un gros travail là-dessus au cours de cette année. Alors, dans la région, on a beaucoup de pays qui font face à des conflits qui sont dans des zones de crise et autres, donc Mali, Burkina, Tchad, Guinée, Niger et autres. Donc pour nous, c'est important aussi de voir comment, même dans ces pays qui sont dans des gouvernements de transition, ils continuent d'être redevables par rapport aux engagements de la nutrition. Donc comme on dit, « nutrition cannot wait », donc c'est vraiment important que tout ce qui a été pris comme engagement puisse être mis en œuvre au cours de cette année d'action pour la nutrition. Et nous y travaillons déjà avec euh, nos collègues de la société civile euh, au sein de ces différents pays. Donc voilà en gros ce qu'on voulait présenter pour euh, l'engagement de la société civile, en disant aussi qu'on ne peut pas réussir seul. Donc là, vous voyez l'image de la rencontre de Gerda avec la société civile en Côte d'Ivoire, donc montrant aussi qu'on est engagé dans le mouvement sol et c'est avec le mouvement aussi qu'on peut réussir en tant qu'acteur de la société civile à ce que cette année d'action soit une réalité euh, en Afrique. Voilà, je vous remercie euh, et je reste disponible pour les différentes questions. Thanks a lot. Over. Thank you very much, uh, Judith, and thank you for all the good and hard work and good to see you again. Um, Without further ado, because we need to take care of the time, um, I would like to I would like open like to open the floor, and I take three uh, uh, questions, and then we go uh, to back to the panelists, and I will decide who which panelist is there to uh, answer. First of all, I can see that Dr. Uh, Gibril Bagayoko, the focal point of. Um, Uh, Mali has raised uh, his hand. Um, Dr. Gibril, you have the floor. Dr. Gibril, are you there? Can you unmute yourself? If this is not the case yet, we go to a question that is put on the on the Q&A in terms of technical expert, expertise, other than nutritionists, economists, uh, communications, etc. Um, I ask especially on behalf of students who may be working on their thesis or research who would like to contribute 
write research about this. This is about uh, young people, maybe students who would like to become involved. Patricia, I will ask you to reflect a little bit of how young people and students can become involved in the African Year of Nutrition. Then I go to Dr. G. Brill. Are you already um, able to um, take the floor? Dr. G. Brill. If this is not the case, I have a second question to Judith. Um, Judith, what is your message to mayors to convince them about uh, uh, investment in uh, nutrition. How do you tell them how important uh, it is for their community? I've also a question for Kifilwe. Um, Kifilwe, I didn't hear a lot about the connection between nutrition and food systems pathways. And I know this is a crucial issue uh, as well, following the um, uh, food systems uh, summit last year, but also uh, uh, following uh, Nutrition for Growth. So we go to Patricia, then we go to Judith, and then we come to Kifilwe, and then we'll see how to bring it further. Be very spot on. Um, uh, you have one minute to, conf to uh, each to answer the question. Patricia, please. Oui, je voudrais vous merci pour la participation des jeunes étudiants pour la recherche. Je pense que c'est une très bonne idée parce que, euh, comme on avait discuté en Côte d'Ivoire avec la, le passage de Gerda, avec euh, le réseau du milieu académique de la recherche, ils avaient dit que c'était important parce qu'il faut aujourd'hui que ce réseau soit assez fort et qu'il puisse utiliser justement ces jeunes qui sont dans la recherche et pouvoir passer à échelle toutes ces études que nous voulons, les utiliser au niveau académique et au niveau recherche pour contribuer au changement des politiques. Donc, je pense que c'est bien vu, l'implication des jeunes à tous les niveaux, même au niveau de la recherche, avec euh, voilà, les, les thèses, les mémoires, tout ce qu'ils peuvent apporter, contribuer, et qui sera validé par le milieu de la recherche, qui est un comité de validation et d'approbation aussi des sujets de la recherche. Merci. J'espère que j'ai répondu. Thank you very much. Um, Judith, you, uh, how do you convince an, uh, a mayor? Um, second question is to you specifically is, will the Francophone youth leaders for nutrition be linked to the existing uh, youth leaders for uh, nutrition? And how are you going to arrange this? Judith, you have the floor. OK. Yeah, thanks a lot for these. Uh, question for the first one. Um, what you can you can talk your... French. You can talk French eh? in French. Okay, okay, no problem. Um, donc pour la première question liée uh, au maire notamment. Alors on a constaté que la plupart d'entre eux confondent ce que c'est que la nutrition et l'alimentation. Donc pour nous, ce qui est important d'abord dans un premier temps pour les convaincre, c'est de leur expliquer c'est quoi la nutrition. Et c'est quoi la nutrition On leur montre que la nutrition est un problème de développement important et qu'il euh, est important pour eux, en tant que maire en charge vraiment de faire avancer les communes, de tenir compte de ce problème qui est un problème spécial au sein des communautés pour lesquelles ils peuvent apporter des solutions. Donc, nous leur expliquons aussi, en fait, que prendre soin de la nutrition, c'est aussi leur responsabilité à eux ayant été élus et mise à la tête euh, des communes pour pouvoir, euh, on va dire, travailler sur les questions de développement. C'est leur responsabilité de faire changer la situation et ils ont la possibilité de le faire. Donc, avoir la possibilité, ça veut dire déjà modifier leur politique locale de développement et d'intégrer la nutrition là-dedans. Et l'autre étape, c'est dédier du financement pour ça. Donc, les maires nous demandent souvent quel genre d'action on veut, en fait. Quel type d'intervention, si eux, ils mettent en œuvre, peut être des interventions euh, montrant qu'ils mettent l'accent sur la nutrition. Donc, on arrive jusqu'à ce niveau où on leur propose des interventions à haut impact nutritionnel pour leur dire, si vous faites ça et ça et ça au sein de la commune, vous allez contribuer à changer la situation nutritionnelle. Donc, c'est un peu euh, comme ça que nous travaillons avec les maires au niveau des, des différentes communes. Et dès qu'ils comprennent, en fait, le fondement de la nutrition et l'importance de la nutrition, le reste, c'est eux-mêmes qui deviennent les agents de plaidoyer. Ils vont convaincre tous les autres et tout. Et c'est comme ça qu'on arrive à 
on va dire, augmenter le nombre de communes, parce qu'on commence par peut-être un pool de deux, trois communes, et après, les maires champions, on les utilise pour convaincre les autres maires de pouvoir aussi euh, faire davantage euh, pour la nutrition. Ok, 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 Donc, ok, voilà pour, you, don't, euh, cette, you don't stop anymore. Yeah. You don't stop okay. anymore. <laughs> I'm sorry, Gemma. I'm yes. sorry. So let's continue um, with the second question. <laughs> now the question about the French uh, speaking uh, young leaders. Are you connecting uh, them? Yeah, yeah, for sure. For the moment, um, ce que nous sommes en train de faire, c'est vraiment de recruter euh, des jeunes pour constituer aussi euh, ces réseaux au niveau de la zone francophone. Parce que pour le moment, les jeunes leaders qui ont été recrutés et formés par le mouvement, c'est tous des anglophones. Donc, nous cherchons vraiment à avoir aussi au sein de la région des francophones qui vont porter la voix sur la question de la nutrition, donc en tant que jeune leader. On est en lien avec le secrétariat du mouvement pour qu'il y ait une connexion dans la suite avec euh, ces différents jeunes-là, mais pour le moment, on n'est pas à cette étape. On est vraiment en train, nous, d'installer ces jeunes et après, on va créer la connexion avec les autres jeunes anglophones. Thanks a lot. I will stop here. Over, Gerda. Thank you very much. We go to Kifilwe. And um, if Priscilla is still there, we also want to hear from Priscilla how the food systems and the an, uh, year of action on nutrition will be combined at the African Union level. Kifilwe, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just to say that um, last year during the AU, I mean, UN Food Systems Summit, AD and NAP had actually taken the lead by providing backstabbing technical and financial support to more than 36 seven member states. And all of them actually have convened the national dialogues. And as a result of that, AD and NAPAD with AU, AUC and the leaders actually developed the African Common Position for Food System, which was launched last year at the UN um, Summit by uh, President Kagame. Just to move forward to say that last week when I was in uh, Tanzania, for example, they are, have developed the national uh, food system pathways and they have requested our support again to launch uh, the food systems uh, national pathway. This will happen next month in, in Tanzania. And a lot actually have happened in terms of uh, really uh, building on existing uh, food systems dialogues. For example, we have developed the uh, handbook for parliamentarians, so the support of Sun Movement, the IP, the IPU, and also FAO in terms of also bringing the voice of the, uh, our parliamentarians at the community level. And to top it off, we have also actually supported many, many member states in terms of the school meals uh, coalition. We have mobilized them to join the coalition. And uh, in the next activity, for example, end of this month, we are also providing power for member states to join the uh, healthy diet uh, coalition together with the uh, eforum. forum So we are indeed building on that work in the 2021 commitment into the year of nutrition at the AUD and uh, NAPA level. Over to you. Thank you so much for that question and for the opportunity. Thank you very much, Kifilwe. Um, spot on. Priscilla, are you still there? Yes, uh, apologies. I was uh, called in on to a, an agent meeting. Uh, yes, uh, in terms of food system summit, uh, summit recommendations, as Kifilwe has said, uh, they are leading on that NEPAD working closely with also the Department of Economy and Agriculture will be leading on that. And uh, to make uh, our role is just to make sure that the recommendations implementation and in, also uh, in line with the theme of the year. And as we are communicating the outcome of the theme of the year, we will, they will be part of that report that will be submitted to heads of state and government. I hope I answered that question, but Kifilwe is the lead on the food system summit at the part of the African Union, over to you. Thank you very much. Um, you answered the question, but it's um, it, there is enough space to spend to invest another hour to see how to do it. Um, uh, all right, but we have one final question, I think, here, and this is: Are there any interventions planned in um, in um, terms of introducing a sugar tax in any African country? Let me go to Kifilwe to, um, um, to uh, answer this question because you might have uh, oversight. Kifilwe. 
Thank you so much and thanks for the question. Actually, South Africa has actually included the sugar tax uh, on the beverages that are produced here in South Africa. So they're really practicing that. And the aim is to really replicate the such practices to the rest of the African uh, member states countries. So indeed there's a country doing that already. Thank you very much. Let me have a quick look because we are running to the end. An anonymous attendee. I don't like it because why do I ask you questions if you don't um, are not able to give us your name? It's so important related to change, global factors, and finally global funding shortfalls. All right. Um, I think this one is a little bit too much and too complicated for now. We are running to an end. For that reason. I am bringing this meeting to a close. I would like to thank all the participants because there was a moment that we have had 73 participants, different stakeholders. Thank you so much for uh, being here and participating. Now we ask you to take action. Don't organize uh, more uh, uh, meetings only, but organize meetings to bring players together who can work together to concretely imp implement. New ideas, please build on what is already there. The food systems pathways uh, that are developed after the food systems uh, summit are there. Make sure nutrition is well reflected there and not just um, by, um, by telling how important it is, but by implementing uh, the new design of the food system. The Nutrition for Growth uh, Summit uh, commitments are there. Most of the African countries have made extremely concrete commitments. Implement them and hold everybody uh, to account. My uh, second conclusion is that all the presentations and tools will be shared to cross inspire each other. Um, um, uh, and that is important because that is the, the objective of this, of this meeting. My third point is look at what is happening in your country uh, or what you can uh, do separately, but also in uh, together as stakeholders. So if you are in the UN, if you are in the civil society, if you are uh, in the team of the focal point of a country, if you are in uh, another event and you want to see what you can do together as stakeholders, come together, organize something, focused on concrete nutrition action, because in these dire times of rising food crisis, it is so crucial to not lose uh, the nutrition perspective. When it comes to um, fiscal uh, policies, um, I would like to make uh, two remarks here. The first is um, do not only focus on nutrition, but also financing for uh, nutrition. And at a certain uh, moment, uh, reacting on George, I said, I think it's about time that the African uh, countries come together and make a strong plan of uh, requesting for debt relief, um, which is so needed right now. Many countries need to make sure that people can um, uh, buy food, have a nutritious, healthy food basket, uh, etc. So this requires extra extra funding um, and they cannot live with further indebtedness. Um, sorry, 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 sorry. Um, yeah, right. I, I just conclude. No. I just conclude. And then the other part. I'm sorry, just a note for our interpreters. The French interpreter is coming up on the English channel. If you could just ah, check okay. your channels. Thank you. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you. And the final thing is that F South Africa has a already sugar tax. In general, um, those countries who are thinking about taxes also think about incentives because those private sector companies who want to continue to do fortification to make sure that uh, food is available and uh, nutritious has the right um, uh, nutritionist uh, value they might need a little bit of an incentive. So if you make an advocacy for fiscal uh, instruments, ask for incentives to make sure uh, private sector, very often small and medium sized companies are doing, are able to do the right thing for nutrition and use the taxes 
for those uh, companies who are uh, uh, putting too much uh, fat, salt, sugar, what have you. And then make sure that you loop back the revenues of the taxes towards new investments in nutrition. So just don't let it go, but have an objective also for the revenues of uh, taxes. Um, with this, I would like to um, thank all the participants, thank the panelists, thank the organizers, and thank uh, everyone who has been uh, involved in this very inspiring uh, uh, get together. We will follow up uh, 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 on this, but we leave it to you in your county to make the best out of this year of nutrition, because this is about investment uh, in people, in uh, people, and whether there's crisis or not, nobody can um, afford it to let already uh, 20 to 40 percent of all the potential of children go during the first uh, thousand uh, day for the rest of their uh, for the rest of their years. It will create not the prosperous future for any country that is so uh, crucial. With this, um, I wish you a very good day, and uh, I hope that we were able to inspire each other. At least you have very much inspired me. Thank you so much. The meeting is closed.